विलेज घुरघुटिया पोस्ट प्लासी डिस्ट्रिक्ट नदिया थर्ड नवंबर 1974 टू मिस्टर प्रोदस सी मीटर डियर मिस्टर मीटर आई एम राइटिंग टू इनवाइट यू टू माय हाउस आई हैव हर्ड अ लॉट अबाउट योर वर्क एंड वी सी यू टू मीट यू इन अ पर्सन देयर इज ऑफ कोर्स अ स्पेशल रीजन फॉर आस्किंग यू to come at the particular time you will get to know the details on arrival if you feel you are able to accept this invitations from a 73 old man please confirm your acceptance in writing immediately in order to reach kurgutia you need to dams park at plasi and travel further south for another 5 and 1/2 miles there are several trains from sialda out of which you can come to the up lalgula passenger leaves at uh, 1 past 58 pm and reaches the plasi at 6:11 i will arrange for you to be met at the station and brought here you can spend the night at my house and catch the same trains at 10:30 am the following morning to calcutta i look forward to hearing from you With good wishes, your sincerely, Kali Kinkar Mojumdar. I handed the letter back to Feluda and asked, "Is it the same Plassey where the famous battle was fought?" Um, yes. Uh, there is no Plassey in Bengal anymore, dear boy. But if you think uh, the place has got any evidence left over of the historic battle, you are certainly mistaken. There is absolutely no sign left, not even the plas trees in the woods that stood in Sirajit Allah's times. The name Plasi came from these trees. Did you know that? I nodded. Will you go, Feluda? Feluda stared at the letter for a few seconds. I wonder why an old man wants to see me. He said thoughtfully, "Um, it doesn't seem right to refuse." To be honest, I am quite curious. Besides, have you ever been to a village in the winter? Have you seen how the mice gathers in the open fields at the dawn and dusk? All that remains visible are the tree trunks and a little area over the one's head, and the darkness falls suddenly, and it can get really cold. Um, I haven't seen all this for years. Uh, I'll go on and get me a postcard to say. Mr. Mudumdar was told to expect us on 12th November. Phil would choose this date, keeping in mind that a letter from Calcutta would take at least three days to reach him. We took up the 365 up Lalgula passenger and reached Palasi at 6:30 p.m. I saw from the train what Phil had meant by darkness falling quickly. The last lingering rays of the setting sun disappeared. from the rice fields almost before i knew it by the time we left the station after handing over our tickets to the collector at the gate all the lights had been switched on although the sky still had a faint grayish glow the car that was parked outside had to be mr majumdar's i had never seen such a car like that hello the said that he might have seen or two when he was a child All he knew was that it was an American car. Its color must have been dark and red once, but now the paint has spilled off in many places. The hood too bore patches here and there and showed signs of age. In spite of all these, there was something rather impressive about the car. I couldn't help feeling a certain amount of away. A car that the outlook and ought to have a chauffeur in uniform. The man who was leaning against it smoking a cigarette was dressed in a dhoti and a shirt. He threw away his cigarette and he saw and straightened himself um to see Mr. Majumdar. Yes, to Kolkata. Um very well sir, this way please. The driver opened a door for us and we climbed into the 40-year-old car. 
He then walked over to the front of the car to crank the handle which made the engine come to life. He got behind the wheel and began driving. We settled ourselves comfortably but the road being full of potholes and the springs in the seat could be old our comfort did not last for very long. However, once we had passed through the main town of Plassey and we were actually out in the country, the scene became so beautiful that I ceased to feel any discomfort. It wasn't yet totally dark and I could see the teeny villages across the right fields. Surrounded by the trees in the meads and the mist rose from the ground and it spread like a smoky blanket and a few feet above the ground. Pretty as a picture was the phrase that came to the mind. An old sprawling mason in a place like this came to a total surprise. Ten minutes after we started I realized that we were passing through the private land for the trees were now mango, jamun and the jackfruits. The road was turned right and we passed a broken and abandoned temple and suddenly found ourselves facing a huge white moss covered gate. On the top of what was a Nawab Khana, a music room, the driver sounded his horn three times before passing through the gate. The mansion came into the view immediately. The last traces of the red had disappeared from the sky, leaving a deep purple way. The dark house stood against the sky like a towering cliff. We got out and followed the driver. As we were closer, I realized the whole house could be kept in the museum. Its walls were just damp, plastered and had built up in several places. The small plants had grown out of cracks in the exposed bricks, but stopped before the front door. Um, no one in this area has electricity, um, I take it. Philida asked. Um, no, sir. Um, for nearly three years, uh, we have all heard our promises, but nothing's happened yet, the driver said. I glanced up from where I was standing. A lot of windows on the first door was visible, but each room was in darkness. On our right there was a couple of bushes, um, light flickered in a tiny hut, and perhaps there was a mali or chalky that lived I see beard silently. What sort of a place is this? Perhaps Feluda should have more inquiries about agreeing to something to come. Light from a lantern fell in the doorway. There was an old servant appeared at the door. The diver had gone and possibly to put the car away. The servant glanced at us with a slight frown then said, Hey, people, please come in. We stepped in behind him. There was no doubt that the house was sprawled over a large area but everything inside it seemed surprisingly small. Luckily, the door was now standing wide open. We began crossing another long corridor and oil lamp burned in a niche to the wall where it needed. The servant opened the door next to the niche and ushered us in. Um, please sit down. He invited. Mr. Mojunda, it was. Um, thank you. Um, th this, this is my cousin, Topshe. I wrote you about him. Philida said. Mr. Mojunda smiled again and nodded. I noticed that he didn't fold his hands in reply to my namaskar. We took the chairs nearest to the bed. My letters have been made so curious, was what Mr. Mojunda could be observed lightly. Philida Without any asking of the question, asked, um, Yes, it certainly, uh, or I have been not troubled this distance. Good, good. Mr. Majumdar looked genuinely pleased. If you hadn't come, I would have felt very disappointed and thought you to be arrogant and you would have missed out of something. But perhaps you have read these books already. Mr. Majumdar's eyes turned towards the table. Four bound volumes are arranged. They are all extremely rare. They are all to do my profession. Did you ever? I never tried to come become a detective myself. 
An English investigator called Malcolm caught the killer after speaking to Malcolm and learning about this word. I came interested in criminology. Um, yes, yes. Fellow, they replied with enthusiasm. Um, wasn't he a French writer? Um, he wrote the first detective novel, I think. Oh, that's right, that's right. Mr. Mojum then nodded. I have got all the books. I love these books because uh, books by writers and Edgar Allan Poe and Conan Doyle. Um, yes, um, probably I was the only one in my family with an interest in the books. Criminology was, wasn't the only subject that held in my interest. Um, yes, of course, I see books on archaeology, painting, gardening, history, biographics, travels, even drama in the theatre. Some of the apples are new, but um, do you still buy books? Oh, y y yes, yes. I have a manager called Rajan. He goes to the Calcutta um, for two or three times every month. I make him a list of the books and he goes and gets him from the college street. Philip looked once more at the books kept on the table. Um, I don't know how to thank you. Startled, we were stared at his hands were hidden behind the blankets, but we have never thought that there was a special significance. Um, arthritis. Mr. Majumdar explained, has affected my fingers. My son helps me to visit me. At the moment, he is looking up to me now. Usually, he looks after me for a long time being. Um, did you get Rajan to write the letter to me? He, he, yes, it was Rajan. Um, he takes care of everything. If I need to see a doctor, he faces me from one brempo. Plus, he doesn't have good doctors. I have noticed casting frequencies and the glances at the chest kept near the bed while he was talking to Mr. Mujumda. Gokul disappeared as soon as he came in. Mr. Mojumdar started speaking and frowned a second. Then he called. Um, Gokul. Gokul. Mr. Mojumdar turned to it and said softly. Um, go on, sweetie. Say it. Shut the door. Say it. For a few seconds, nothing happened. Then suddenly the parrot spoke in an amazing clear voice. Shut the door. It said. I gave a start. I have heard a bird speak so distinctly, but wasn't that all a big fat hen? I see. Um, may I ask why the bird has been taught to say it? Um, it yes, um, indeed, and I am going to tell you why. It does strange things to O's memory. About three years ago, one day I suddenly discovered that I couldn't remember the combination that had opened the chest. Can you believe that? After using the same members for years, almost every day it had been simply banished from my mind just like that. All day, I tried to remember the numbers, then finally it came back in a flash in the middle of the night. I could have written it down, but I didn't want to. In the case it fell in the wrong hands, it was far better to keep it in my head. But now I realized I could no longer depend on my memory. So the next morning, I made up the code and taught my parrot to say it. Now it says every now and then, just as parrot says. Radhesham, or uh, how are you? Um, but uh, what is it? Mr. Mujumdar asked uneasily. Um, what have you found? Do you trend eyes to tell anything? Um, I think, Mr. Mujumdar, someone tried to force this chest open. Um, are you sure? Mr. Mujumdar had stopped smiling. Feluda put the candle back on the table. There were some marks on it. Was what Feluda exclaimed. Um, no, no, there is no need to jump to the conclusions. I may be quite wrong. Mr. Mojumda said, um, Absolutely, he has been there for me with the 30 years. Um, and Rajan? Um, Rajan also spent a good many years. But now there was some guarantee that someone who had honored my trust until today won't betray it tomorrow. Feluda nodded in the agreement. Um, no, there is uh, no guarantee at all in the unfortunately. Anyway, 
tell Goku to keep an eye on the things. I don't really think that there's an immediate danger. Goku came back with the lantern and took us to our room. It was smaller than Mr. Majumdar's but um, less furniture which made it easier to move. Two beds and had been covered with considerable care. A lantern burnt in the corner pillow that sat down on the spotless trees and seat that covered the beds and said, Can you remember the code? Yes. Very well. Here's my notebook and a pen. Write it down. I would have loved to go those books by Gabriel. I wrote the words down. None of it made any sense. How on the earth was Feluda going to find its meaning? Um, I simply cannot see the numbers for a combination of a lock can be heated in the strange masses. Ah, uh, I mean this is pure nonsense, isn't it? How can a hen sort a dough? That's where the challenge lies, don't you see? Nobody actually asking a hen to shut the door. That's much as obvious and each word has a separate meaning. I have to keep figure it out on something and somehow by the tomorrow morning. Fellow the got up and opened the window and enjoyed the moon being rising at that time. This probably pawned the chair on the right, which could be seen through the thick growth of the plants and the syrups. Fellow the shut the window again and keep the eye on the cold night air in the same instant we heard a car ride. Um, that's probably Vishwanath Majumdar. Fellow the remarked. Good, I thought. This man, when we had seen, we called to dinner. Looking around my room, my eyes still suddenly fell on something I hadn't noticed there for. It was a portrait of a man that took up most of the opposite wall. There could be no doubt that he was the one of Mr. Mojumdar's ancestors. His eyes were large and his moustache thick, its edges standing upwards, his hair rippled to his shoulders. I bet he used result and used heavy clubs. Um, perhaps he was the first bandit who came at Jaminder. There was footsteps outside. Both of us looked at the door. Gokul had left a lantern on the veranda. A shadow blocked its out right for a second and then fell on the threshold. It was followed by the figure of a man. Could this be Viswanath Majumdar? Surely not. The man was wearing a short dhoti and grey kurta. Um, what is it, Rajan Babu? Feluda asked. Rajan Babu finally found what he was looking for. His eyes came rest upon Feluda. Chuchu Babu has returned, he said, in a grab voice that suggested that he might have a cold. I have asked Gokul to serve the dinner. He will come and call you in a few minutes. He left. What's the smell? I asked soon as he had gone. Naphthalin, I think uh, he just took the wooden kurta out of a case and put it on. Silence fell once upon as the sounds of the footstep faded away. Suddenly he remembered that he had been murdered in this house. God knew in which room it took in place. Fellow in the meantime had dragged the table and not and closed it to the bed and opened his notebook to look at the coat. I heard him mutter, Shut the door, shut the door. A couple of times, thoroughly bored, I decided to step out of the room and stand on the veranda outside. Oh God, what was that? My heart nearly jumped into my house. Something was moving in the distance where a faint light from the lantern gave away to the complete darkness. I realized that it was a cat, not a black or white, but one of the stripes on its body. It's, it's, it's a tiger. It's returned from my stairs strongly and gave a yawn before walking lazily into the darkness. Where did Rajan Babu live? Where would I have been given a room in which it was impossible to hear the noises in the other parts of the house? One was analyzing the fingerprints and was simply called the criminology that the third was a crime and its detection. I picked up the fourth, but the other did not be understood in the name meant it was full of pictures cheaply of the firearms that it could be Feluda and his revolver. Um, no, why should he? After all, hadn't come to solve a crime. He, there was no reason for him to have brought his revolver. 
I put these books in the suitcase and was able to sit down. Someone was trying to recognize us. He was in Gokul or Rajendra Babu or the driver Mondal. He had to be Kalikankar's son, Vishwanath. Sorry to have you waiting, um, he said, folding his hands and looking at Feluda. Um, my name is Vishwanath Majumdar. Now, um, could I see, he resembled his father's to get Rigri. He had the same eyes and the same nose. He was probably in the mid-forties. Feluda and I went with him down to the ground to the dining room. I had half expected to ask to sit down on a floor for a traditional meal. When we all were seated, Vishwanath Mujumdar asked, I like uh, having a bath twice a day, be it summer or the winter. Um, that's what it took so long. I'm afraid. He was still reeking of the perfume soap and possibly an expensive colony. Have you ever spoke to my father? Vishwanath Mojumdar asked. Yes, I am rather embarrassed by what he did. Um, you mean the books which he gave you? Yes, even if those books were still available, they would have cost at least a thousand rupees. Vishwanath Mojumdar laughed. When he told me he had asked you to come here, I was at first quite annoyed with him. He told us. I didn't think it was fair to invite people from the city to a place like this. Um, why not? Philip the protested. Um, why should you have objected to that? I have lost nothing by coming here. On the contrary, I have gained such a lot. Vishwanath Mujumdar did not pay much attention to these words. He said, speaking for myself, he declared, I have been perfectly happy to go back tomorrow. The last four days have been quite enough for me. Thank you. I have no idea how my father can live here permanently. Um, yes, um, I see that means I shall live soon after you go to the station. Feel the power the doll over the rice. Your father is most interested in so many different subjects. Are you interested in anything other than your business? Um, no, sir. Just before going to bed, Philodo picked up the lantern and lighted it down. The room seemed to be shrunk in the sight in just a few seconds. But just as we dropped off, I heard Philodo muttering, which made open them once. Shut the door, shut the door, open the gate. No, that's wrong. Pick up sticks. Yes, that comes first. Feluda. I cried, slightly alarmed. Wake up, Feluda. You are talking in your sleep. What's the matter with you? No, no, no. I heard him chuckle in the darkness. <laughs> I, I am fully awake, Tupshe, and no, I haven't gone mad. I assure you, what just happened, Tupshe, is that I think I have owned the set of Gabriel. What? You cracked the code? Hey, yes, uh, I think so. Um, I was actually ridiculously simple. I should have spotted it at once. It makes no sense to me. Okay, very well. Let's have it then. Softly, I began to chant the rhyme. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up the sticks. Seven, eight, open the gate. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. Laugh and dwell, dig and dwell. Um, that all will do. Now doing thing the full message means, shut the door. Thus would mean three and four. Big fat hen would mean nine and ten, right? But there's an O before big fat hen. That means the whole number is three, four. Zero nine one zero. Simple, isn't it? Um. Now go to sleep. I lay down again, marveling at Phil's craveliness.
In the morning, Rajan Babu disappeared slightly. The time the sleep came very quickly, and I was up, uh, was up, closed my eyes. When I woke, Phil was opening the windows. It didn't last night. Did you hear it? I hadn't, but now I could see through the window that the clouds had gone. The sun shone brightly on the leaves. I could see that from my bed. Gokul disappeared with no cups of tea and an hour later. Looking at him in the daylight, I was considerably surprised. Not only did he seem so old, but his face held an expression of deep distress. Has Kalikankar Babu woke up? Filda asked in Kalikankar Babu's voice. Perhaps Gokul was hard of hearing. He did not answer for this question at first. All he did was stare at him vacantly. Fellow had to raise his voice and ask again before he nodded and left the room. We made our way to Mr. Majumdar's room at around 7.30 and found him exactly we had left him at the night before. It must have taken many years ago for it such a match young Kalikankar Majumdar. His hair and the breed was both jet black. He greeted us with a smile. Um, I got Rajan and take the book out by the Gaberio. I knew you could do it. He said, Um, well, well, it's for you to decide whether I have got the right number. 340910, isn't it? Well done, Mr. Mojumdar's voice was both pleasure and admiration. Go on, take those books and put them in your bag. And please take another look at those marks on the chest. I had a look myself. They didn't strike me in any way. But um, have you had a cup of tea? Mr. Majumdar asked. Um, yes, sir. I told the diver to bring the car out. Viswanath left very early at this morning. He said that he wanted to reach the Calcutta by 10. Um, I was actually thinking of going out by an earlier train. We don't really have to wait until 10.30. We left immediately. Perhaps we could catch the 3.72 down. Um, very well. I have no wish to keep anyone from the city in this small village any longer than it's necessary. Feluda was suddenly looking rather grave. I wanted to ask him if he had noticed anything suspicious but didn't dare open my mouth. The road was wet and muddy. Fellow they took out the luggage out of the car and thanked the driver. Then he came out once more and approached one of the cycle rickshaws that were waiting outside. Um, do you know where the local police station is? Yes, Babu. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you take us there? We are in hurry. We climbed into the rickshaw quickly. The driver began paddling first, honking as loudly as he could, waving his way in the mining crowds. There was the left in the charge in the sub-inspector Sarkar. It turned out of the fellow's name. If we have not heard of you, sir, he said. What brings you here? Um, can you tell me about Kali Kinkar Majumdar of Gurgatiya? Kali Kinkar Majumdar? As far as I know, he is a perfect gentleman who keeps himself to himself. Um, wh why? I never heard anything nasty about him. Oh, what about his son Vishwanath? Does he live here? No, I think he lives in Calcutta. Whatever is the matter, Mr. Meter? Can you take your jeep? Come with me. There is something seriously wrong. Mr. Sarkar did not waste another minute. We began bumping our way back to Gurguitia in a police jeep. I was there. Only one could hear these words. Um, the conversation continued. Uh, arthritis. Those marks on the chest that laid dinner. The hoarseness in Rajan's house, voice and naphthalin, every little piece had fallen into place. Topshe, I tend to forget sometimes that there are people such as Kebar as Pelometir. The first thing that I noticed was considerable surprise on reaching the old mansion was a black ambassador standing outside the main gate. It's obviously belonged to Biswanath Mochumdar. Look at it, Wills, Frodo said as we got out of the gym. There's no trace of mud anywhere. The car has just come out of a garage. A man is possibly its driver 
whom I hadn't seen before, was standing near the car. He, visibly pale and frightened at the sight of her team. Are you the driver of this car? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Is Mr. Nath Mojimdar at home? The man hesitated. Philodha ignored him and walked straight into the house, followed closely by the inspector, me and a constable. Together we ran up to the stairs and down the long passage and led to Kali Kinker's room. Oh, no! Philodha exclaimed. I found him staring at the chest. It was open, judging by its gaping emptiness. Nearly all of its contents had been removed. Gokul came and stood outside the door. He was trembling violently. There were tears in his eyes. He looked as thought he might collapse any minute. Philodha caught him by his shoulders. Gokul, where is Vishwanath Mojumdar? He ran he, 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 out of the back door. Mr. Sarkar. The inspector left with the constable with a word. Listen, fellow the soup Gokul gently. If, if you tell me a single lie, you will go to the prison. Do you understand? Where is your master? Gokul's eyes widened in fear, looking as though they had soon popped out of their sockets. <laughs> has been, has been murdered, murdered. He gasped. Who, who killed him? Chutubabu. When? The day he, he arrived that same night, he had an uh, uh, argument with his father and asked for the numbers to open the chest. The mother said, I am not going to leave it and give you. Uh, ask my parrot. Then a while later, Chotu Babu and his driver just, just got together. Gokul Chuk. <coughs> he, he uttered. The, the, the next few words with great difficulty. The, 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 the two of them dropped a dead body in the lake behind the house. And Chutubabu said, If I breathe the word to anyone, he had killed me too. I see. Fellow, they helped him sit down. Now, now tell me, am I right in thinking that there is no one called Rajan Babu at all? Yes, sir. We did once have a manager by the name, but he, but he did die two years ago. Fellow and I leaped out of the room, began dragging down the stairs. There was doors to the left where the stairs needed. The needs of the rear of the house we had Mr. Sarkar's voice. It's no way of trying to escape, Mr. Mojumdar. I have a gun in my heart. He shouted. This was followed immediately by a loud splash and the sound of a revolver golfing out. We continued running, jumping over the small bushes and crashing through the thick foliage. Eventually, we found Mr. Sarkar standing under a large tamarind tree with a revolver in his hand. Behind the tree was the lake that I had glimpsed last night through our window. Its surface was covered almost totally with the weed and algae. He jumped before I could fire, Mr. Sarkar said, but he cannot swim. Giris, say if you can drag him out. Vishwanath Mojumdar was fished out in a few moments by the constable and transferred behind the bars, very much like his father's parrot. The money and the jewelry he had stolen from the chest were recovered by the police. It appeared from although he had ran a successful business, he used to gamble rather heavily and was up his neck in debt. Philip explained that he had arrived at the truth. Rajan Babu came to our room 20 minutes after we left Kali Kinkar and we saw Vishwanath Mujumdar half an hour after Rajan Babu's departure. The Rajan Babu came back briefly after the dinner. Not once did we see the father and the son and their manager together. This made me wonder whether there was indeed the three different people or whether one single person was playing the different roles. Then I remember the books on drama and acting. Perhaps these books belonged to Biswanath Majumdar. Maybe he was interested in acting in beard and different wigs. Changed his voice to fool a couple of visitors. In a dark house, he had to hide his hands, though for pre assembly his knowledge of makeup was not adequate to turn his own hands into those of a 70-year-old man. 
But who had actually written to you asking you to come here? I put in. Oh, oh that letter was Kalikin Karbabu himself, I am sure. His son knew about it. So he did nothing to stop our arrival. For he, he could use me to find out the combination numbers. In the end, we go so delayed that we couldn't catch a train before half past ten. Before he left, fellow the out the eight books he had been given and handed to me. I have no use to accept gifts from a murderer. He said, Tupse, go and put this back. I replaced the books, filling each gap in the shelves, and came out quietly. The parrot's cage was still hanging outside the veranda. Shut the door, shut the door. It said like this. Shut the door, shut the door, oh big fat hen, shut the door, shut the door, oh big fat hen.